commentator, a media personality, a journalist and an author, a gay libertarian activist, a Trump supporter, and the author of a New York Times bestseller, Dangerous. You have written to me about all of this and couldn't quite, frankly, couldn't believe what you heard. Magnificently articulate. You would have thought that someone like this, who attacks the politically correct, who challenges identity politics and gender fluidity, and a whole heap of other nonsense, you'd think that Australia would welcome this injection of ideas rather than be threatened by them. Instead, and it's the reason I'm going to speak to him today, there's been an almost universal ban on providing venues where he can speak, and indeed even hotels where he can stay. And of course, the widely reported violence last night in Melbourne. Lest people think this is uniquely related to Milo, you might recall earlier this year in April, Ian Hersey Ali had to cancel her Australian tour because of so-called security concerns. She was due to speak in Brisbane, Melbourne and Sydney and I was to interview her. She was going to speak about reforming traditional Islam and confronting militant Islam. She's a Somali-born Dutch-American activist, author and former politician, an outspoken opponent of female genital mutilation. But then the organisation hosting her, Think Inc., said it had been harassed about her appearance. Its insurers were contacted and told there could be trouble, and venues where she was scheduled to speak had been contacted and warned that there would be protests when she was due to appear. Much of this was done by an individual called Syed Murtaza Hussain of the Council for the Prevention of Islamophobia, and he informed the Festival Hall in Melbourne there would be 5,000 protesters outside the venue if the engagement went ahead. There was an appeal on change.org to prevent Ian Hersey Ali from speaking, and I asked at the time where government fitted into this, and I said if Malcolm Turnbull was worth two bob, he'd be on the phone to Ian Hersey Ali and simply say, it's the Prime Minister here, I've read that you have security concerns, not in a country of which I am Prime Minister. And he would say, I want you to come to Australia, and if I have to use the army, the military or whatever, I can guarantee there will be no concerns about your security or your safety. In a country that I lead, I'm not going to put up with these sorts of threats to free speech, and I'll prove it by guaranteeing your safety in Australia. That's what a Prime Minister, not Malcolm Turnbull, any Prime Minister should say. And if you can't say that, we're in big trouble. No one should be frightened from speaking or of speaking in this country. And if we can't guarantee the security of people like Ian Hersey Ali or Milo Yiannopoulos, then we forget about boasting a commitment to free, let alone freedom of speech. There were appalling scenes in Melbourne last night, but it was the left at it again. Violence in order to silence Milo, the articulate young man of conservative views, of course sometimes provocative, always brilliantly articulate. But this is the way of the world now. The left don't want to win the debate. They want to halt the debate before it begins. So you throw bottles and rocks and ignite fireworks. We saw it, of course, in the Tony Abbott fundraiser at Redfern a couple of weeks ago, and now here with Milo. There were about 100 police. My argument is simple. You put as many police on duty as you need. We have to reassert before it's too late the right to free speech in this country or we're dead ducks. Milo's been conducting a sold-out tour in Australia. Tickets virtually sold out before he left America. But you wouldn't know he was in this country. Are we frightened of giving some kind of coverage to his ideas? Are we frightened of his capacity to articulate? Are we frightened of the fluency and the potency of his message? His crime? He doesn't conform with what the left expect. Have you read anything about this man in the papers? Have you seen him on TV? He campaigned for Donald Trump. That's a crime. He's a conservative. That's a crime. He won't play the victim card. That's a crime. But he's on the line from Melbourne. Milo, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? I'm not too badly. How did you go last night? There was a lot of carry-on, wasn't there? Well, I was fine because I, of course, was whisked out the back entrance in a, in a big truck surrounded by large men. But um, there was a lot of kerfuffle as we say, um, out front. It was not as the newspapers, as, you know, the FX media outlets are reporting it, um, a, a clash between far left and far right. This was the left showing up, being violent to stop people's speech. Mm. 
The problem you have is you're articulate, you're interesting, you're unapologetic, a clear thinker, and apparently that frightens some people, not just in this country but around the world today. It's a sad state of affairs, isn't it? Yes. I mean, Ayan Ali that you mentioned earlier, let's be completely clear, she is known for two things primarily. One is um, advocating against female genital mutilation, and two... Uh, she wants a reform of the more extreme, violent political branches of Islam. These are two; these are two missions, if you like, two life missions, completely beyond criticism. They are so noble um, and so terrifying to the left. For for what reason? This is the left. The left is saying we will not allow a woman to speak who doesn't want young girls to be cut and advocate against political violence. Now, you know that that. For me, it's, it's such a shocking thing that she would have to cancel a tour down here. I mean, I can be provocative and all the rest of it. I'm aware of that. But for the two of us, in our own different ways, I, I know that I can, you know, wind people up on purpose. But she is so beyond reproach. She's such a, a mild-mannered and decent person. If you can't accommodate either of these two people in your country without violent scuffles breaking out, you have a real serious problem when it comes to free expression. Free inquiry. Um, Absolutely, and that's a problem. That's a problem not just for no. you know the population who who are prevented from having a full range of opinions and thoughts um, they can consider and decide between, but it suggests something about a deeper malaise in the state too. I mean, it suggests that you know about all kinds of things about what children may be being taught, about what kinds of opinions are acceptable in the media, about all kinds of other things about Australian society. It doesn't speak highly of the country. If there's one silver lining, and it isn't really much of one, it's that the problem seems to be just as bad everywhere else in the West. Absolutely. You said recently, we've got to the point where citing studies and questioning facts is enough to get you blacklisted from the media, from academe and the entertainment industry. I live in America where the touchiest subject has always been race. Liberals have been calling conservatives racist for decades to shut down debate, but recently they've stepped up their assaults. They don't call us racist anymore. They call us white supremacists or neo-Nazis. You say (laughs) hilariously they even do it to me, despite the fact that I have a black husband and have never uttered a racist sentence in my life. To your great credit, of course, you stand up against all of this because that's the ultimate answer, isn't it? Yes, of course it is. Um, and on my on my tour, uh, when I speak to these, these huge audiences that are coming out to see me, I tell them one thing very simply, and it is don't give up on your sense of humour or your commitment to fact, reason and logic. If you're in the right and you can explain yourself to other people while making them laugh, which is what I try to I try to practice what I preach, I try to be as funny as possible in my, in my talks, if you can take people with you with humour and be utterly unapologetic about your point of view, you will win. Yes, I must say on laughing, uh, can I just tell my listeners, Milo did say this, laugh and keep laughing, and between your uncontrollable fits of giggles at the comical excesses and hypocrisies of the progressive left, Keep spitting facts and data and logic. And if you can be a happy warrior instead of the usual fulminating Fox News host, if you can be charming, likeable, attractive, funny and modest like me, you'll win. (laughs) 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 Oh, don't we need you? Don't we need you? (laughs) But but, you see, I'm well well known on three continents for my humility. Just a quick one without dwelling on it, and I do just want to let my listeners know this nonetheless. It is extraordinary that you've even struggled to get a venue in which to speak or a hotel in which to stay. Yes, it is. Um, Even hotels. We can't pull money at hotels to allow me to stay in them. I mean, from a hotel's point of view, I guess maybe it's a property damage thing. From the venues, they're worried because the left holds this Damocletian sword over the heads of anyone who will allow conservatives to speak, particularly conservatives who are effective and who um, yeah, attract the feral left, because the left has the power of reputational damage over them. The left will say, uh, we'll, we will associate your brand, we'll associate your venue, we will associate you in the public imagination with the worst conceivable crimes, with neo-Nazis and pedophile apology and all kinds of other deranged allegations. Um, and we will attempt to make the name of your business synonymous with the most evil and depraved things in life. Um, this is what the left does. It is not just a system of name-calling. It's a system of allegations against people on the basis of no evidence whatsoever used to, to bully and to intimidate and to get what they want, not through reason and persuasion, 
but through intimidation and accusation. Extraordinary. You, you said, uh, Milo has said, instead of persuading us, which they can't on the facts, they bully, manipulate and intimidate us into pretending we agree with them. Then they shriek in horror when we turn around and vote for Brexit or Donald Trump just to spite them. <laughs> they... Well, there is a sense, isn't there? there is, I, I mean, I get a feeling that many voters in the US were were lukewarm on Donald Trump, but they were so sick of being told what to do, sick of being told what language they can use, sick of the school marmish nannying from the left, and even from some establishment Republicans too, that they just thought, you know what, I'm going to vote for Trump. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But you did say this. Uh, you say the tide is turning and the end of social justice is coming to an end, the era of social justice, all we defenders of common sense have to do is press home our advantage. Conservatism and libertarianism need an injection of good humour and mischief, so grow a spine and grow a sense of humour. Australia, of all places, is not lacking in either courage or comedy. That's the challenge. Yes, it is. Um, and, you know, I think Australia is, is rising to that challenge. I have been so impressed and heartened and uh, flattered and uh, I felt so, so, it's been so wonderful to see. I'm at 13, probably we're at 14,000 people showing up to my shows over the course of a week. We've had to add new things all the time. We've got a third date in Sydney added on um, uh, Wednesday. And then, of course, the, my fun, finale in, uh, in the Gold Coast on, uh, on December 7th. Um, we're adding shows. We're adding capacity. We're, you know, one of the problems we have is not just venues cancelling on us, but finding venues big enough to host us. Um, it's a really remarkable thing, and and it, I think Australia is rising to the challenge. I don't want to speak too soon. Touch wood. No, um, no, no. Your, obviously, your politicians are a mess, and your media is a mess. But people, <laughs> ordinary Australians seem to be getting it. But it's hard, as it? You said politicians are a mess. They've got this intelligent... I mean, he is an intelligent person, this Andrew Lee, a federal Labor MP, and he said... Our democracy doesn't need to hear from Ianopoulos because his views are the antithesis of an open, multicultural, outward-looking Australia. I mean, this is the bloke, Andrew Lee, who wrote a book titled, without a hint of irony, Choosing Openness. <laughs> <laughs> what? Mr. Mr. Excuse me, excuse me, Mr. Lee, if a gay Jewish immigrant with a black husband isn't diverse, what do you want? <laughs> I don't know what it is. I mean, <laughs> 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 services, it wouldn't matter if I were a paraplegic lesbian Muslim immigrant. It wouldn't matter because I believe in the small state and low taxes and free speech. I don't think I'm going to be diverse enough for him no matter what. No. Just to, before we go, you've been marvellous. Look, uh, where, what with the future, where do you see, because you speak all over the world about these issues, where do you see us going? Well, I think Europe is lost. I think America's on the precipice. Um, I've been very heartened by the response to me in Australia. And, and, and note, by the way, in that mess last night in Melbourne, the left really showed us who they are. They didn't just come for people uh, lining up to see my talk. They attacked the police. They attacked the police. They, you know, they, they attacked other people. They attacked journalists. They attacked some Sky News journalists. They showed us who they are. Petulant babies. Uh, who throw their toys out of the tram, you know, when they can't get their own way through through intimidation and through bullying. So I think, the, you know, it's on, the, it's on the front page of at least one newspaper today. I think they showed us who they are, and I think Australians are going to be very um, wary of anyone. Good on you. Die to that or, or shit. Good on you. Good on you, Milo. Well, Lovely to talk to you, and look, we'll keep in touch. You keep doing what you do, and you do it very well, and above all else, you put a smile on our face. So we love that as well. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Take care now. Thank you. You too. There he is. Milo Yanopoulos.